could offer you several more months of healthy engineered T cell therapy. It's an experimental treatment that teaches your immune system to fight the cancer. Your body could cure a doctor. She doesn't have specific indications. The most molecular therapies to work. He offered her a treatment that wasn't approved by me, you, or the FDA. That oh, she violates her protocol. Not to. What's the weed from here? Yeah, same idea. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you have for? I have for Amazon. So how did you find it? Um, TikTok. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> So we fully natural. Yeah. How long you been natural? All my life. <laughs> That's good. So what you usually do to your hair? It was. I was wearing it like wet and curly. Mm -hmm. And then I had washed it like some weeks ago. You wear like buns or ponytails or that? Mm, not really. I have this week though. Kind of short in the middle. Well, not short, but it's shorter than the back in the middle. Mm. Oh, do not don't let me forget your bag. Bag. Okay. It's the first time coloring bag. Okay. Let me forget. So, okay. What kind of extra you put on you? Oh, I've been using. I use either Murray's. I ain't had. I ain't using many, but I use some um, Eco. I don't really care for it because I don't really white stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it might need to do it uh, two times though. Cause okay, now it's time to get the washing. So I'm just going to drench her hair with warm to hot water. So it's going to open up the hair follicles. The steam from the hot water is going to get into it. Plus the steam from the steamer. And I'm going to go in, let the aloe vera plant just seep all through her hair, rubbing it on her edges, her hair strands, getting it in between on her scalp. It's really like a good pre-treatment. It helps also clean the scalp because it's so gooey and it picks up everything. And it also moisturizes and it helps hydrate the hair. Like look at that versus from when she first came amazing plus the steam like the steam and aloe vera is like a team that you never knew that you needed to be a part of i love it so i'm just rinsing it out real good and i'm going in with my tea tree shampoo and i love this because look how good it is as well it helps clean the scalp it also helps fight dandruff and itchiness and like it has tea tree in it, <laughs> so it gives the clients that real tingly, clean, peppermint feeling on their scalp. Like their scalp just feels so refreshed. And like I said, plus the steam. So the peppermint feel plus the steam is just superb. So now I'm detangling her hair with my shampoo brush. They are available on the site. So, I love the shampoo brush because a lot of people, they want you to get in, like, scratch their scalp and all that. You're not supposed to scratch your client's scalp because that can cause abrasions and you don't really know how fragile their skin is. You can scratch it up. Once you cause abrasions, that opens up for infections and all this other stuff and that's really not what we're trying to do. So make sure when you all shampoo hair, you get all throughout. Separate the hair in sections. Use your shampoo brush to scrub at the scalp and detangle at the same time. You see how I'm doing it. And make sure you get to the middle. Like I feel like a lot of people neglect the middle and that can hold a lot of dirt. And she was so sweet. Like, y'all, the way she was at this boat, look at it. Like, <laughs> water was running down her face. And I had asked her, like, you feel that water? She didn't say nothing. I said, you sleep. And that's when she started laughing. But a lot of the clients, they just get so relaxed when they're at the boat. Like, I, they just don't be caring. <laughs> but, so, I shampooed her hair a total of three times, I believe. So, I used Care Care Shampoo, the Tea Tree Sensations Shampoo. Olaplex shampoo correction four times because I also used um, Design Essentials Oat and Honey Protein shampoo 
And the conditioners I use will be linked in all the products will be linked in the bio. So I just used a microfiber towel to soak up some of that water. And now I'm going to detangle her hair and blow dry it. Usually I like braid it up and let them sit under the dryer. But her hair wasn't that dense. So I really wasn't too worried about it holding water. So I just went ahead and just blow dried it myself. And it only took me 10 minutes to blow dry her hair. So that really wasn't bad. I love this combo that I use with my Babyliss Ceramic Extreme Blow Dryer and the Ventilated Wooden Powder Brush. I know you can find these powder brushes at Sally's. I'm not sure where else you can find them. Um, and then so she booked for the first timers appointment and the first timers appointment always comes with a treatment and a trim. So I'm just trimming her ends just a little bit and trying to stay within the direction as if I was giving her a silk press. Because I like to ask people, you know, do you ever straighten your hair? You like the way your hair curly, you know. Because if I cut your hair curly, it's not going to look the same wet. Um, unless I keep the same direction that I'm going in, pulling it downward. A lot of people don't really understand that. So I like to explain. So that's why I'm still going in the pattern that I'm in, going in. Okay, now we got her scalp braided. And I forgot to record that part. And so I'm just going to go ahead and slick back her edges with got to be gel. And I really like using that for the edges. It helps slick it back really good. I brush it back with my little baby hair brush. And then I go over it with the blow dryer. And that really sets it. It looks real, real sleek. I'm going to insert a picture. So look how smooth it got. Yes. And you want to make sure that you slick those baby hair because that's going to mean everything when you put the cap on because if the edges are like bushy the cap is not gonna lay flat then I use pantyhose I don't use wig caps so yeah with the pantyhose it definitely has to be sleek so y'all see y'all see and they have different shades for um the pantyhose this one matches her perfectly as you can see they have lighter shades and then they have like a darker shade so that's really good um i wanted to try a different technique this time but i forgot what i seen somebody use instead of the got to be spray on tiktok i think they used spritz but i couldn't remember so i just grabbed my king <laughs> so I'm going to let her sit up under the dryer for a second Making sure that it's really really dry Versus me usually using my hand blow dryer Alright so she's from up under the dryer And I'm just going to use my mini scissors To cut off of the excess cap And so the got to be it did leave like a gray little casting because i was spraying like a little bit too close and i didn't really rub it in but i'm just putting makeup around that so it's really not going to be seen and i'm just going to sew down of course like the rest of the cap and after i do this part i'm just going to put a little bit of makeup on her edges which i should have did before i even put her up under the dryer y'all like it's just so backwards but anyways now i'm gonna clean up you know a little bit of the glue and the makeup off her edges because it will the glue that you use to lay the wig will not really stay if you're putting it on top of gunk like makeup gel like any of that is really not going to work so now i'm just going to use that same makeup because you see that it blended it worked i'm going to put that inside the wig and i'm only going to do the edges and her part because a lot of clients when they get their wigs done they don't switch it up they don't you know, if she getting the middle part, she done plan on making it a side part. So I'm like, I'm not finna waste my makeup. I started doing that. And so I just blow dried it and set it. Now I'm about to measure out where I'm gonna have it. So she got this wig off of Amazon. And that lace was lighter, like well whiter than this in person. So I really had to use more makeup than i anticipated because i did not know that it was like this but anyways 
um i'm just measuring out where it's gonna be on her head you know so i know where to put the glue that's how i do it to my liking um i think i'm gonna change up my technique because i don't know i think i'm just gonna change up my technique and so another thing like these wig companies if you get like a 13 by 4 you know usually you have to cut over your ear or something like that because of the extra lace no like these wigs are coming to fit i did not have to cut like extra lace so i could um lay her wig and yes i am using tweezers to do this glue but anyways i did not have to cut a ear tab or anything like it was already done and on some other people who have brought me like amazon wigs or anything like that it's been the same way so i don't know if it's like false advertising it probably is because they are definitely not 13 by 4 all the way through like you have that parting space in the middle of your head but you do not have the option of a side part um you only have the edges so be careful when you are ordering from these companies and look how fast they drive but be careful when you are ordering from these companies and then you come to the stylist and you're like well i want a side part and they only gave you one and a half inch on the side of your wig. And you're looking at us like, you know, make some shape. Um, it's going to be ugly. Like, <laughs> um, it's doable, but it most definitely will be ugly. So, just be mindful of what you are ordering and actually read. Reading is very fundamental. I am not saying that this client in my chair, you know, did that. She wanted a middle part, like, right off. She wanted a middle part. Um, her wig was actually, like, a full, um, 13 by 4. Look at me dropping the glue. But her wig was actually, like, a full 13 by 4. I just had to throw that in there because a lot of clients, they do order without reading and they like to complain so yeah make sure y'all check in what y'all are ordering before you even book i don't know if i will ever stop getting in front of the camera but anyways now i am laying the glue um well no i'm laying the lace into the glue like yeah i cannot talk but <laughs> Um, I just press it down with the comb, massage it in, and comb backwards. That's my technique. That's my preference. That's the way that I've been doing it. If y'all have any suggestions, I really don't mind. It's always one. It's always more than one way to skin a cat. So if y'all see me do anything, and then y'all know a better way to like do it, uh, comment. Like I don't care. Either I'm gonna do it or not. Like. So, y'all ain't got to worry about none of that. I don't mind being given tips, being given gems. I'm always going to be teachable. Like, it's never going to be a moment in my life that I want to be stubborn to it. It's like, yeah, I just know everything. Like, But I'm putting this cap on her head. And I already flat ironed the wig before she came. Because I feel like when you flat iron the hair first before you curl it, it looks way better. So, I just flat ironed it so it was ready for whatever she wanted, like crimps, curls, wand curls, like any of that. But she saw it already, like, pressed out, and she was like, yeah, let's just do that. I'm like, bet, I ain't really got to do nothing. So, I just really just went back over, especially, like, the roots of the track with the hot combs, and then I just touched up the ends, and that was pretty much it. I did that while I let her lace set, and yeah. Okay, so now I'm about to go in and cut the excess lace off. And it looks like I really have it close to her hairline. But I'm just, I'm going to cut that off. Like I had it, it's just so weird sometimes doing lace fronts on certain hairlines. Because you do have to shape them according to the way that their head is where their hairline is so i would suggest like a lot of people if you know your hairline is low just get a 13 by 6 because they're gonna have to maneuver with that 13 by 4 and you're probably gonna end up with a 13 by 2 definitely on the sides of your head 
uh, basically, you know, of how much they had to, like, adjust and cut and shape it to your hairline. Okay, yeah, it was so many technical difficulties, but y'all see the milk, but I really wish I could have got, especially me doing the baby hairs on camera, but it kept dying, and it was just, oh my gosh, but I am finna have to go back in and fix her part in just a second, but the camera just kept dying, y'all. I wish I could have got the baby hairs. Um, I had plucked it a little bit more. I did a lot of more stuff to it, but yeah, it was just crazy. But now she's just taking a look. I always ask them before they leave because I really want my clients to not feel scared. Because I feel like a lot of hairstylists intimidate their clients to where... They don't feel comfortable telling them what they want, what they like. So I always ask, you know, before you go, you know, anything else we could do, you like how a style like this, you know, what's up? I do wish I would have took some better pictures. It's like sometimes I forget how to take pictures because I really wish I would have had her like flip her hair over, did like a messy flip over look so I could have got like some good content. But, ugh. I don't know, you live and you learn. I really want her to let me, like, frame her face, like, cut it downward or something. But she, she ain't want that. Um, I don't know how she really ended up styling her hair because today is her birthday. So, um, you know, when it's your birthday, <laughs> you just be wanting what you want. Some, oh, look at me taking pictures. But when it's your birthday, you just be one what you want. So she wanted it straight. She still had a lot of stuff to do. She had to get a facial. I think she said a massage. Like, this girl had a lot of stuff to do to say that it was her birthday. And I hope everything panned out. You know how she wanted it to. But, yeah. So their hair probably would not have lasted if I'd have put curls in it anyway. But she was so sweet and she was so nice. And it was crazy because I actually had the energy to pack a first-time client bag. And everything that she was, like, asking me about, I'm like, this is crazy. All this stuff is going to be in your bag. Like, she asked about a band. The band was in the bag. She asked about, I think, a scrunchie or something. I don't know, y'all. I put some... Oh, and she asked about lashes. I put lashes in the bag. And it really worked out. I didn't even know it was her birthday. So, yeah. They really worked out good. And she liked those lashes that I had chose, which was great. Um, So, now I'm going to try to help her... Um go ahead put the band on so because she's gonna go get the facial right now that's what i love like you know pamper yourself like she doing all this i don't know how she had the, enough patience to do all her self-care on her birthday like i would have been freaking out by now but yeah 